Procore. I highlight some of the uh, cool things that Procore has been working on over the last year. So first is really around this idea of how we're investing in machine learning and making Procore work better for the people in the field. So I'm going to show you here how we do that now on photos. So I'll come over here and navigate to photos. And then so what we've done is built in some technology that makes it so that as you upload photos to Procore, we start to auto-recognize what those are about. So you can see here, I'm going to go ahead and type in piping, and automatically it's going to bring back all the photos that are in this project about piping. So this is really valuable because we get millions of photos uploaded to Procore every single week, and for your job sets you might get it up to hundreds of photos, and instead of having to tag each of those with the thing that they need to be, Procore is now recognizing those and organizing them for you. So another example here would be going to search for framing. It recognizes both wood framing and steel framing. It recognizes framing on masonry walls. You can see here that it recognizes all different types of framing automatically and sees that. So that's one of the ways we're really investing in making Procore work better for those people in the field is you don't have to spend all that time searching for photos anymore. Now you just type in the search, it returns them for you. And because they're automatically filtered by date, you can just look at that and the additional filter by date. So that's not the only investment in search we're making. One of the other things we've done is really improve the global search capability within Procore. So I'm going to come over here and go ahead and tap on our global search feature. And now I can search for really just about anything. So I'm going to go ahead and search for framing here again. And as I search for framing, that's going to go through and look at everything in Procore. So it's going to return anything about framing for RFIs or submittals. It's going to return framing if it's mentioned inside of documents. And you can see here, it also returns all those same photos that are part of that framing that I did in photos. So that's included in that smart search. Uh, so that's really a big part of some of the investment that we're making on how do you find information faster in Procore so you can get back to doing what you guys do well, which is build, build buildings and, uh, and manage your project. And so the next thing I'm going to just do a quick highlight of is probably going to be right here on more. And this is more around I mean, uh, really investments we've made in field productivity and then in BIM and quality and safety. And so for those field teams that are looking to track time in real time and to make it a little easier for them to do that, we've added to the functionality of Procore of all those field productivity reports, but we've added another time type, which you can see right here of my time. And what that allows me to do is now I can go ahead and clock in as myself. I can pick the cost code that I'm going to be working on. So let's say I'm going to do some concrete work here, add some walks. I can go ahead and say, and then I can go ahead and see here, now clock in comes in, right? I can also do it that way. So I can add it by myself in multiple hours, or I can come in here and just clock in. So check this out. Now I've gone in, and now my countdown timer starts. And so the beauty of this is I might work on this cost code or this task for an hour or three hours, and I don't have to go in and clock out to change my task. I'm just going to go ahead and type or tap switch task, and I can immediately come up and use a new cost code, maybe to go to finishing, apply that, and now I've got a new clock starting with that new task. And so this then enables those teams where you might enable your field team with their own mobile device to clock in and out. And the beauty of this also is we have this geofenced. And so when you set up the project, you can set up a geofence around your job site. And so it's going to tell your payroll admin or your project manager, hey, did this person clock in in the geofence? Or did they clock in outside of the geofence? It still allows them to track their time, but it notes, hey, they maybe weren't in compliance with where they were supposed to be when they started that. And then when I'm just done, I go clock out. And then that time card is submitted for my manager to approve. So that's some of the investments we've really made into field productivity. Now the next thing I'm going to show you is some enhancements we've done to a product we really launched just this past year of Procore BIM. So I'm going to tap on the models here. And that's going to take me right into the model. And so this is really the most performant viewer that you can find on in, in construction. It is built for field teams so that they can know what's going on in the field, not just in 2D to 3D. So I'm going to go into my 2D map. And here you can see how I can navigate by just moving my finger around. So I'm going to go right into this corridor here. And so I'm going to walk forward behind this glass door. And there we go. So I'm going to tap on the ceiling 
and I'm going to go ahead and hide the ceiling. And then I want to see what the distance is between the floor and maybe this uh, fire protection pipe. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on measure, which you can see right here. And then I'm going to tap on the floor, and then I need to tap on a second area. So I'm going to tap on that pipe. And you can see there that it automatically tells me then that that is 13 feet, 2 and an eighth inches. So as I'm going and installing in the field, I can really then understand exactly where information or where uh, material needs to get installed and how high maybe from the drop ceiling. So that's a new feature that was added. And then you can also see here, I'm going to hit done, is we've added the ability to both create observations, observations and coordination issues right from the model. So now your field team can really communicate with your office team and understanding, hey, how is this need to be built or if they encounter an issue, logging that right away. And so that's some of the stuff we've done on mobile. The last thing I want to show you is something we've done for those field teams around safety and quality, where they really want to get the right information so you can track, uh, instead of just track success and failures, instead of just I passed, I failed, or yes, no answers in your checklists, Procore now allows you to create what are called custom response types. So I'm going to go over here to our inspection setup, and you can see here that I have multiple response sets selected. And you can see the default ones here, which are our, our root cause of response or yes, no. But you can see now I've also added some additional response types. I can see here that I have recorded CO2 levels. Passing is zero to 4,500, failing is over 4,500. I've got my temperature levels that I can do in five degree increments for room temperature to really understand versus just pass fail. Am I close to failing? Is it just barely passing? so that I can make better decisions as a safety manager or a quality manager for how we're going to move forward with building those. In the case of like World of Concrete, a great example might be slump tests, right? So I can then validate, hey, how high or how low is that slump test failing? And really create then, and so these can be then assigned to any item in a inspection checklist so that you're capturing exactly the information that you want to capture versus it being free-form entry in the field. So that's a couple of new things we've just added to Procore uh, that we think are really valuable for both the office team and the field team.